Okay, graphical method of solving nonlinear system of equations. Okay, so let's start, ladies and gentlemen. So the uh, the question usually comes like this: solve the following equation using graphical method. By the way, why do we have to do this? And that takes us to the objective. The objective of today's class is to enable us to learn and understand how to use graphical method in solving systems of non-linear equation or non-linear system of equation, all right? So having said that, here is the question for illustration. Okay, so solve the following system of equation graphically. And what is the equation? So let's see, let's see. No, let me change this one, I'm sorry. Let me change this entirely. Let's do this one instead. Um, just give me one second. Okay, so let's do this one. Um, three x squared plus four x minus y equal to seven. And then two x minus y equal to negative one. Okay, so uh, let's read it once again. It says solve the given system of equation graphically. All right. So these are the this is the equation that is given, and they are very specific on the method you can use or you should use in order to solve it. So now the question becomes, how do we get started? Um, you you start by creating a data table, which means you are creating a table where you have a set of coordinate points, where you can generate a set of coordinate points, and that set of coordinate points you will use it to plot the graph. So in other words, you are going to create, um, before you even do that, before you even create that table, uh, you may need to arrange your, your equation such that you'll be solving for y, such that you'll be solving for y. For example, look at equation one here. This one, everybody please pay, pay close attention what I'm about to do. Look at equation one. If you want to solve for y, all you need to do is transfer y to the right side and transfer 7 to the left side. Now, if you make that transfer, you are going to get, um, if you make that transfer, like I said, you are going to get 3x squared plus 4x. Then if you transfer equal to, if you transfer 7 to the left side, that's going to give you minus 7. And if you transfer y to the right side, that's going to give you y. So this thing is the same thing as saying that y is equal to 3x squared plus 4x minus 7. We need this equation. And we repeat the same process for uh, equation 2. So for equation 2, we have to transfer um, y to the right side and transfer negative 1 to the left side. So if we do that, we are going to have 2x um, equal to, then when, when negative 1 transfer to the left side, it becomes positive 1. And when, it, when, when negative y is transferred to the right side, it becomes positive y. So this is equivalent to saying that y is equal to, um, what is it again? 2x plus 1. So you can see, you can see that this equation, the one I'm establishing right now is a linear equation. The other one is a quadratic equation. And these are the two things. Uh, both of them are a function of x. So these are the two equations that you are going to use to create your data table. So now how do you create data table? That's easy. So just draw, okay, so then, you need your calculator so that this thing is going to move a lot faster. So, and then you, you just divide it into two. So the first one, it doesn't really matter the one you write first, but um, probably write the first one, uh, the linear equation first. So y is equal, no, I'm sorry. Y is equal to 2x plus 1. And the upper side of it is, okay? So now you can take your various values of x and the corresponding values of y. So you can take 
something like negative three, negative two, negative one, zero, one, two, three. If you like, you do the fourth one. And you do the same thing for the second uh, equation. You do the same thing for the second equation. You do the same thing for the second equation. Okay, so this is your x value, and this is your negative one, no, negative three, negative two, negative one, zero, one, two, three, four. So this is y equal to um, 3x squared plus 4x minus 7. All right? So now, how do we generate these values? So how do we generate these values? I suggest you use calculator, but before you use calculator, you have to make your substitution. The reason why I want you to use calculator is so that you can make everything fast. We need to move fast. Okay? So now pick any of the numbers you want us to evaluate. We will probably do the first one for the second. We can focus on this meanwhile. I'm just trying to demo what you need to do. So for the value of x, uh, when x is negative 3, here's what you do. You just say y is equal to um, 3 bracket negative 3 whole squared plus 4 bracket negative 3 minus 7. And then you evaluate this. For example, negative three squared is nine. So you have three times nine, and then positive times negative is negative. So this is minus 12 minus seven. So three times nine is uh, what? 27 minus 12 minus seven. What does that give you? That should be uh, 15 minus seven. That's eight. Uh, eight, thank you. So this is eight. And then you just repeat the process to get the other values. All right. Now, let me do the first one on the on this one. On this one, let me do the first one. So that I'm going to give you time to do the rest of it. And then we take it from there. So for the first one, you are going to have uh, y equal to 2 bracket negative 3 plus 1. OK, 2 times negative 3 is negative 6. So you have negative 6 plus one, which is uh, negative five. So you have negative five here. Once again, use calculator so that you don't waste all the time. All right, so I am going to give you um, two minutes to complete the first one and three minutes to complete the second one, making it a total of five minutes. So from now, which is, uh, this is 12.50, I would like you to complete the table. Once again, use calculator. And I'm going to come back to you at um, 12.55. You can start. OK, ladies and gentlemen, let's come back together. Um, let's review what you just did. So let's start with the first table. Let's start with the first table. So what is the value of y when x is negative 1? 1. OK, who agrees with that? You said when it's negative 1? Yeah, when x is negative 1. I think it's negative 1. I said, what is the value of y? I when know. Okay. You said the answer when the value is one or negative one? Negative one. When the value yeah, is negative I one. Yeah, I think the answer is negative one. Yeah, I got negative one. Too. Yeah, negative one. My bad. Okay, so I'm going to write negative one. All right. So what is the um, the value of y when x is one? When x is one now? Three. Wait, did we skip zero? Oh, no, no, I forget it. I'm, I'm, I'm asking the... I'm, I'm, I, 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 that's the reason why I'm asking you certain numbers. So what is the value of y when x is 3? 7. If, you, if anybody disagrees, please let us know so that we can check, check these things out. OK, so yeah, now let's go, let's go to the second table. So what is the value of uh, y when x is negative 1 on the second table now? Negative 8. Yeah. Negative 8, somebody said, and somebody acknowledged. OK, how about when x is 1? It's zero. Do we all agree? Yes. Okay, I'm gonna write zero. Um, how about when x is three? Oh, right. sorry, thirty-two. When x is three, you said thirty-two, and when x is one, you said when x is two. When x is three, three, three. Okay, I said thirty-two. You said thirty-two. Yes. 
Who agrees? Who also got 32? I got 32. All right. I got 32. All right. So now, um, let's keep our data right now. And of course, we need the fourth one. So look at the fourth one. What is the value of X when X is four? The first one, the first table, like here. I need to fill up this I one. I got nine for the first table. Is it nine? So yeah. how, about, how about the second table? When X is four. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. When X is four, what is the value of um, Y? Is it um, 57? Let's see. Let me write 57 temporarily and let, let me verify that. Okay, so when X is four, so Y would be equal to three bracket four squared plus four bracket four minus seven. Okay, four squared is 16. 16 times uh, 3. What is 16 times 3? Plus, uh, plus uh, 16 minus 7. So this is uh, 48, you said. Uh, 48 plus 9. Uh, plus 9 will give us 57. So that's correct. 57. So now these are the values we are going to use. Of course, we will also use the, the, the we also need the second one. But when we get there, you tell me, I'll write it. So now, I am pretty sure now everybody has a graph. If you don't have a graph, let me know now. If you don't have a graph paper, let me know. Can you go back up what? real quick? Mr. Okay, 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 you go up. Yes. So now, here's my question. Nobody's answering it. If you don't have a graph paper, let me know right now. Just say I don't. I don't. I don't. I don't. Okay. Graph I don't. All right. Now, let me show you how to create a graph paper right away. I never had a graph paper throughout my high school, not even one day, but let me show you how to create a graph paper right, right away. So just take your line paper, the same line paper that you are using, preferably just use a blank one so that uh, your, this thing is going to look good. So use a, a blank paper. This is basically my blank paper right now. Okay, so now take a ruler or any straight edge, just place it on your blank paper and draw a series of lines uh, vertically. For example, draw a series of lines. Can you see my lines? Yes. All right, so just do that. Just do that very quickly. So you see, the horizontal lines becomes your horizontal line. The vertical line you drew becomes your vertical line and you have a graph paper. This is exactly what they do, except that they print it. Okay, so now um, you draw your, your coordinate system. So your coordinate system, you just draw a line for your coordinate system. So this is your X axis, and this one is your Y axis. This is your X axis. Now look at your scale, look at your scale because this is very important right now. You can see that your minimum value, your, your smallest value for X is negative three and your largest value for X is four, four. So now you need at least negative three on this side and you need four on the other side. So you can have your zero, uh, minus one, minus two, minus three, minus four. Then one, this is your one, two, three, four. Okay, so now look at your Y axis. For the first one, the smallest value is negative five. The largest value is nine. On the other hand, if you look at the, if you look at the, um, what is it called? The, the, other, the other table, your smallest value is negative eight. And then your largest value is uh, 57. So how do we get 57 on the Y axis? You can get 57 by uh, doing it in, um, in 10. So this can be, uh, let's say this can be 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. So, and of course, your Y as it stretches down. So this can be your 10, negative 20, negative 30, negative 40, negative 50, right here. So now it is now left for us to plot the graph. So let's go. Before we cross the, plot the graph, let us complete our table. What is the value of uh, y when x is negative 2? The first one? Yes. Negative 3. 
Okay, we have negative three here. How about when x is zero? Zero. I mean, no, one. Is it one or zero? It's one. It looks like it's only Adam that is in this class, right? No. Okay, then please answer question. How about um, y when x is two? Five. Okay, I'll write five. So now let's do the second one. What is the value of y when x is negative two? Negative three. Negative three. How about when x is uh, zero? It's negative seven. Negative seven. How about when x is two? It's 13. 13. Okay, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to help you plot the second one, and then I'll give you time oh, to plot the first one. Oh, wait, give me a moment. Somebody else should, should be pressing these numbers. Okay, so let's plot it. Let's plot this thing and see. I'm going to plot the second one. So when x is uh, negative 3, y is 8. When x is negative 3, y is 8. By the way, this is 10. This is 20, 80, 40, 50, and 60. And this is negative 10, negative 20, and uh, what else? Uh, yeah. Negative 80. Okay, so now when x is um, you need to tell me these values because if I'm if I keep on scrolling up and down, I will waste a lot of time. When x is negative three, what is negative? What is y? For the second for the second set of numbers. Yeah, the second one. What is y? Um, the so second one. Negative three. How? Did you say, uh, I wrote negative, is it negative three or negative eight? Well, you said when it's negative one. No, when it's negative three, the first oh, one. Oh, eight, 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 okay. eight. Okay, all right. So now that's what I'm going to plot. Negative three and eight. So eight is somewhere below seven. You see, all these things is an approximation. How about when it is negative two? It's negative three. Negative three is way below somewhere here. How about when X is negative one? Is negative eight. Wait, did I say the first one? Yes, what I'm doing, ladies and gentlemen. Sorry. It looks like some people are just copying, they are not responding. Only one person is responding. Yes, what I'm doing, I'm plotting when x is negative three, I want to plot eight. When x is negative two, I want to plot negative three. When x is negative one, I want to plot negative, negative eight. eight. Okay, let's go. When x is negative uh, one, what is the value of y? It is ne negative when it's one is, is zero. Negative eight, okay. Oh, it doesn't look right. You guys are not Mr. telling Kevin. me something, it doesn't look right, Mr. Kevin. Yes, can we label each of these um different equations for y? Like, can one be a and one b or something like that? So we know which one you're referencing. I'm referencing the second equation now, which is this one, the second one. So you can label it as b if you want to. Okay. That's what I'm that's what I'm plotting now. So when I'm asking you the x values, that's what you need to give me. All right. All right. So do we continue? Now mm -hmm. look at your value. Look at your value. Did you do the computation yourself so that you can verify if what we wrote is correct? Laurel, I'm asking. Yes. Okay. All right. Now give me the values again. When x is negative two, what is the value of y? Negative three. Okay. Plotted. Now, when x is negative 1, what is the value of y? Negative 8. Okay, hold on. Yes? I think you're plotting in the wrong place. How? You said when x is negative 2. Negative 3. What is the value of y? It's supposed to be a negative, so it would be on the bottom half. Yes, you are right. Yes, you are right. Thank you. So it should be on the bottom part. It should be on the on the um, on the bottom part. Thank you. You are correct. So negative three should be on the bottom part. So somewhere here. Okay, let's go. Negative one. How about negative one? Negative one looks like is it eight? Negative eight? Yes. Okay. So negative eight is somewhere here. Okay. How about when x is zero? It's negative seven. Okay. So negative seven. When x is zero, negative seven is supposed to be somewhere here. Okay, how about when x is one? Zero. Zero, when x is one, zero, somewhere here. When x is two? Oh, I mean 13. 
when x is two, so 13, 13. 13 should be somewhere here. How about when x is three? 32. Okay, so 32 is somewhere here. How about when x is four? 57. 57 should be somewhere here. Now you can see, you can see we have a shape right now. We have a shape which look goes like this. I'm just connecting the dots. Okay. Yes. So now if you have a, if you plotted with a graph paper, you are, you are, you, you are going to have a smoother curve than mine. Now I'm going to give you three minutes to plot the first one. You can plot, you can call it plot graph A. So I'm going to give you two minutes to plot graph A. Plot it on the same scale. Do not draw another graph, just plot it on the same scale. So you can call this um, graph A, or graph B rather, That's graph B. So I'm going to give you two minutes to plot graph A. That means you're using these values. You're using these values that, that you guys generated. So hold up. So like, you know how we, mm, so we can't use it. We can't make another graph or you don't make another graph. Plot it on the same. Plot it on the same. Do not make another graph. If you make another graph, the purpose of the lesson will be defeated. I mean, because like the range in which you have your number set up will be a lot different, and it's a lot harder. It just... doesn't matter. We are on this on this range. We you still have nine. You still have nine. That is nine is below ten, right? Yes. Okay. So you still so have nine, and you still have negative nine. five. Negative five is somewhere here. The other side is negative five. So plot it. You 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 will see why we, you need to plot it on the same. So we're fitting everything between the negative ten area and then the positive ten on the y axis. Yes, you are fitting in everything on that scale. The scale you already created, and your minimum value for the first one is negative five. The maximum value is nine. So you are fitting everything there. Okay. Trust me, it's going to work. Just uh, plot it. So I'll give you three minutes instead. Use three minutes. So I'll, I'll come back to you at 118. Let me give you a secret right now. Let me give you a hint so that we can speed up. Plot the first one. Plot the first one, negative three and negative five. And also plot, this, uh, plot the last one, four and nine. Skip the rest of them. Just plot these two. Negative three, negative five, and then four and nine. Negative three, negative what? Yes, the first one, the first set of data, negative three and negative five, and also plot four and nine. Plot these two. Okay. Once you are done plotting that two, join the point to create a line. Okay, so let me do exactly what I asked you to do right now. I'm going to plot the first one, which is negative three, negative five. So you have negative three here, and you have negative five uh, somewhere at the middle of uh, 10, so somewhere here. And then the other one is four and nine. So four, which is here, and nine. Nine is close to 10, four and nine, which is somewhere here. And then I say join the points. So the points I am going to join will be Use the straight edge to join the point. Can you see my point right now? Can everybody see what I just plotted? Look at the look at the board. So I plotted negative three, which is here, and negative five, which is below the ten. I also plotted four and nine, which is here. I joined the two points by creating a straight line. Okay. Yes. So that's what I did. So now, if you do this correctly. If you do this correctly, look at the point of intersection here, point of intersection where I'm highlighting right now. This is another point of intersection somewhere here, somewhere here. So now the two points of intersection becomes the solution of the equation. What did I say? The two points of intersection become the solution of the equation that we are giving to you. So now, the solution is going to be the first point of intersection is, um, what is it? They both have negative two, negative three. No, look at the point of intersection here. So the point of, I'm sorry, I'm erasing instead of uh, drawing. 
point of intersection is this line right here. Look at it here. That should be negative two and something. Negative, negative two and negative three. Negative two and uh, it could be negative three right here. Yeah, somebody said that. Negative two comma negative three. That's the first one. And then the second one is, uh, what is it? Somewhere here, which is uh, one and what? They both intercept, never mind, no. One intercepts at zero, one, and the other one intercepts at one, zero. Never mind. It is, um, it is definitely more than, it is definitely more. It could be at one, it could be at one, but it is somewhere here, okay? It's closer to, I mean, one is closer to one and one is further, I mean, one is a little further off from one than the other. Okay, so it is, uh, we are going to take one comma, y is probably three something like that okay and this is the solution the point i'm trying to make everybody is once you plot your graph correctly the point of intersection becomes the solution if there is no point of intersection whatsoever that means the equation does not have real solution that's what it means if if there is only one point of intersection that means the equation has only one real solution instead of two okay yes all right so that's uh that's the uh the okay brief. well you said can you repeat what you just said sorry I didn't yes know. i said if it has two points of intersection that means the equation has two real solutions if it has no point of intersection that means the equation has no real solution. If it has only one point of intersection, that means this, the equation has only one real solution. So the point I'm making is, once you plot your graph, you are going to get several scenarios. And based on what you get, that's going to help you to make your conclusion. Okay? Yes. All right, so now, Having said that, so I'm going to give you the one that you are supposed to do right away. And then you submit both the one you did and uh, the notes you took. All right. So the one I'm going to give you is super easy. Super, super, super easy. Give me a second. Let me get this. Um, okay. Here's the task. Okay. So that's the task. 